Hi, and welcome to Best and Tesla News 129. Yes, I am still on holiday, as you can see. But uh, it is Sunday, it's time for the new show. Uh, I am a little bit short on time right now because of my holiday, so bear with me. This is all I could squeeze in in the new show. But there's still a lot of great stuff, like Tesla is now bigger than GM and Ford in net profit. Hmm. But all this and much, much more in today's episode. So let's dive right in. Wall Street automotive analysts want some new stuff from Tesla to get excited about. Like GM that continues to show off new models to get investor excited, but still produce next to nothing when it comes to EVs. Like I have talked about before, do they also need more models from Apple to get excited about that company? No, they are ruling the smartphone market when it comes to profits with a handful of models. And they do the same thing with computers and everything else. If you have forgotten, that is exactly what Steve Jobs did in 1997 when he came back to Apple. He killed off 70% of Apple's product and saved Apple from bankruptcy. Simplicity is key. A few category killers in each category is all you need to succeed. GM themselves actually made a whole model about this back in 1921 called the Ladder of Success. But it seems they have long forgotten this model. But these are such good stories, I am actually working on a whole video about it, about the production range architecture that GM kind of created and became the biggest automaker in the US but didn't stick to their model and went bankrupt in 2008. And the whole story about Steve Jobs that came back and saved Apple and how Tesla is using what we learned from Apple and GM's early model, but GM seems to have forgotten all about. So stay tuned for that video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on that video. I think it's going to be very interesting. But all the knowledge we have got from all of these great stories, the old automotive analysts don't seem to get, or the mainstream media, or many other people. Whereas I as a Tesla investor get very excited about Tesla producing about 300,000 EVs a quarter, which they didn't do just one year ago. And GM actually produced less EVs than a year ago, and all their sales are going down. I don't need new models to get excited, I need execution on production and growth and earnings. Something I will not get with GM, but Tesla is in a league of its own. They have higher automotive cross margin and operating income than anyone else. And we do also see the Wall Street analysts talking about the demand issue, as now Rivian, and Lucid and Ford and GM have wait time over a year, so there is a very good demand for their EVs. True. But this unfortunately speaks more about their ability to produce EVs than their demand, as Rivian produce a couple of thousand EVs a quarter, the same goes for GM actually right now, and someone like Tesla produce about 300,000 EVs per quarter. So that Tesla still has a wait time of over a year speaks to high volume and high demand. But that GM has a wait list. Well, of course they have a wait list, they hardly make any electric vehicles. So we really have to look at what the different automakers are producing before we can take a look at their wait time and talk about demand and catching up to Tesla. All the legacy automakers are doing is to complicate things for themselves with 25 different EV models. While common sense would say that more choice give more utility, 
Behavioral economics shows the complex choice usually result in no choice at all, and more importantly, no sales. And that more choices you have, the less happy you are with your choice, because you will always be thinking maybe it would have been better with one of all the other choices. Maybe this is one of the reasons why GM has been going down in sales. Too many choices in the same price category that is only result in cannibalizing their own sales. But much more to come on this in my coming video, but I just want to share my opinion on this topic as it seems everyone is talking about it at the moment. But speaking of GM, we also got their earnings report for Q2. And well, Tesla was actually more profitable than GM in Q2 2022 despite delivering 82% fewer vehicles. Total vehicle sales in Q2 GM was 1.4 million down 19% year over year. Tesla's 254,000 vehicles was up 27% year over year. Total net income Tesla had 2.2 billion dollars up 98% year over year GM 1.7 billion dollars down 40% year over year so in the first half of 2022 Tesla has earned about 5.7 billion dollars in net income and GM is at about 4.6 billion dollars and Ford only had $667 million in net income in Q2, even though they had over $37 billion in revenue. They are really not earning a lot of money on their business. And Tesla is already today, even though they are multiple times smaller in terms of units sold, bigger than both GM and Ford when it comes to net income income and people and automotive analysts still don't know why tesla is worth more than gm well the stock price is all about the future potential in growth and earning and tesla is still only going in one direction up and gm in the opposite direction and mary is still blaming it all on supply chain issues as she writes which reflects the impact of the supply chain disruptions we experienced, especially in June. So June was Tesla's record production month, not only in Shanghai, but also in the US Fremont factory, the same month that GM was especially down. But as we have talked about many times before, GM has been going down for seven years straight how they can continue to blame it on supply chain issues and everyone just accept that is beyond me. If I was an investor in GM, I would be pissed of all these lies. And one thing to take note of is that as always, GM's targets and plans do not line up with their official target of catching up with Tesla. As Mary writes, going forward, we will continue to mitigate the risk and drive down costs to help us deliver $90 billion of annual EV revenue by 2030. Well, Tesla will be very close to $90 billion in revenue this year, but will for sure be way past that next year in 2023. And GM hopes to get there in 2030. How in the hell is this catching up to Tesla? It is not. That is lying. And they also write in their report, we have a binding agreement securing all battery raw materials, supporting our goal of 1 million units of annual capacity in North America in 2025. That again is not going to be enough to beat Tesla with its two factory that they have right now in the US that is going to have a capacity of more than 1.65 million units. I mean, the level of detachment from reality at GM is amazing and very, very frightening. They still show no plans that aligns with their target of catching up to Tesla. Ergo, they are lying to their investors. And as I showed in one of my latest video, if GM continues to drop this much year over year, as they have done for the last seven years, Tesla will be bigger than GM in 2025. And that is including GM's ICE vehicle sales.
No way GM will be catching Tesla as an EV manufacturer. They have just shown us they don't even plan to. It's like GM don't think that Tesla will ever become bigger than Tesla is today. So frightening the blinders GM is maneuvering their company with. This will not end well. Remember, they went bankrupt in 2008 and have never paid back that loan. So if you are a US taxpayer, well, you have helped pay for GM's survival and have never got anything back for it. But the government is back at it again. GM is not filing for bankruptcy yet, but they did just get another loan from the government of $2.5 billion. It goes to both GM and LG's 50-50 joint venture called Ultimate Cell LLC. So the US taxpayers are paying to help GM to produce more batteries. Well, Tesla is doing it on their own, and not in a joint venture, but on their own own. And remember, GM did just lose 40% of their net income year over year in Q2. And if their trend from the last seven years continues, I hardly think the government will be getting that loan back either. But we will see if GM will be able to turn this sinking ship around and maybe pay some of all their loans back to the government, but I highly doubt it. And Sandy Monroe has been tearing apart the Tesla Model Y with the new 4680 cell. He is again dazzled by the engineering Tesla is able to do. So let's take two minutes to hear it from the expert himself. Your chances of having a thermal runaway, I think, are going to be less than some of the other guys in the uh, in the uh, automotive business. I I will tell you, this is a lot different than what I was expecting. I'm again, I'm dazzled by the uh, the technology that Tesla has cranked out on this. This looks different again than anything we've ever seen. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. It's got batteries and it's got connectors and and uh, contactors, I should say, and, um, and bus bars. But at the end of the day, every time you look at something from Tesla, it looks like, well, this doesn't even come from the same company. The only thing that's similar is, like I say, it's got batteries and separators and conductors and, uh, and bus bars. But at the end of the day, it's, it seems like, it seems like they, they just, they, they don't have a, they, they don't have a limit on their capacity to invent. Yeah, and in this facility, we have about a dozen EV batteries. And the one thing we haven't really seen are threaded fasteners. So think back, Sandy, to the BMW i3 that we received. Each set of batteries, they were prismatic cells, were secured with aluminum plates, and those aluminum modules were secured to the bottom of this huge aluminum structure you're eliminating all these threaded fasteners and threaded, threaded fastening operations with either laser welding, high strength adhesives, epoxies, glues, and, and Sandy, what's one of your principles when it comes to increasing quality? Well, if you want to increase quality, there are three things that drive poor quality. Uh, number one is fasteners of any kind, okay? So I don't care if it's a screw or a rivet or what have you, it's one of the biggest opportunities for, uh, for failure. When I was working for Ford, um, we did a great big giant study. Uh, the, uh, the sealing and fastening team did. I was a co-captain on that. And guess what we found? And we found out that about 75% of all our catastrophes were directly attributable to um, threaded fasteners. When your head blows, if you have a cylinder head, uh, if you have a nice vehicle and the cylinder head blows, it's not the cylinder head's fault, it's the, um, it's the threaded fasteners. And not having threaded fasteners is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, amazing. So again, Tesla is making something Sandy has never seen before. They are just out innovating everyone else. As Elon always says, the only thing that matters is the pace of innovation and Tesla is outpacing everyone else. And as Sandy pointed out, they're even outpacing BMW on how the damn thing is built with no fasteners. Tesla's build quality is starting to really outshine the old guys. You as a consumer will never know how the batteries build or put together, so most people will never know this, but Tesla is already outpacing everyone else in build quality all the way into the bone of the car. 
Even the Germans cannot keep up. They still build EVs like they have been building ice cars forever. And Tesla is reinventing every little thing from how things are being put together to big leaps like the 4680 cells and how the whole structure battery pack is put together. As Sandy said, there is no limit to their capacity to invent. And the old OEMs are just stuck in their old ways. They will never be able to keep up with Tesla's pace of innovation. People saying otherwise are just kidding themselves. And let's get our weekly update about the Tesla Giga factories. That means handing it over to Brian from My Tesla Weekend. Take it away, Brian. Hey Lars, well the only big news in Fremont is that the mega castings are cycling about 6% faster than previously, thanks to some amazing work by Met God in Wilderness. In Shanghai, we can see a swarm of interior workers at shift change about to go in and work on this building at the North Central, and Wuwa was gracious enough to go out and try and find what we believe is the location of the next Shanghai Gigafactory. In Berlin, yes, the parking lot at the South End is expanding, there is 4680 building work literally closing off, and the pour to the south of the Motorworks building is complete. It doesn't look like this will be a building, probably storage or loading for heavy, heavy stuff. Maybe motors, maybe components, maybe magnets for the motors. Tough to say. At the north, along that road, there is a new tent about to go up, and Model Ys with new colors have been spotted. In Texas, at the southwest corner, a whole batch of new superchargers have gone in, and along the east side, where the entrance is, the super tall glass is getting installed, finishing that up. That hill in the south area, well that's getting even taller, and the cathode building skeleton is complete. The roof is 35% complete, and they're starting to pour the concrete floors. That's moving along real fast. Along the rooftop we can see a little bit more solar work and more work on the HVAC work inside. Yeah, it kind of feels like we're saying some of the same stuff each week, so what we're going to do is, from now on, we'll switch this from weekly construction updates to monthly and see how it goes, because sometimes there's just not a lot to show. And if for those of you who want to get deep in the weeds with me, follow the minutia, I'll still be doing this on my channel each week in a slightly longer format, so you can really see what's actually going on. So this time I gotta say, Lars, Slap Nation, be nice to each other, and I'll see you next month. Thank you so much for that update, Brian. And yes, we will be seeing you next month. And don't forget to follow Brian if you want to take some deep dives into the construction and all the great interviews Brian does. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. Let's start with a little visual look at the first half of 2022 in the US new car sales market. I don't actually think I need to say anything here. I don't think I have seen anything so clear as the trend in the US. Everyone is down, Tesla is up. And not by a little, up 89% in the US in the first half of this year. Nice. And Tesla China really gets some momentum going again, as we can see the harbor is filling up with Tesla, according to Nicholas, there should be over 8000 Tesla waiting to be shipped. Tesla already have 3 ships on the sea, and one waiting in the harbor, but they need a lot more to get all of those cars out of here, so looking good. And Volkswagen is now making the ID4 in the US, so hopefully we will see Volkswagen turn their shrinking ship around as their sales in the US of the ID4 are going down. So let's cross our fingers that the made in US model will start selling well in the US to get some some traction for Volkswagen's EV adventure in America. And Sawyer shared on Twitter, Tesla Insurance has now launched in Utah and Maryland. In total, Tesla Insurance is now available in 11 US states covering a population of over 130 million people, about 40% of the United States population. This is such an understated part of Tesla's business. That is just quietly growing in the background. 
And as you know, I am on holiday right now. That is why the new show is so different and why their sound is so different. And we did drive over the Stelvio Pass in Italy. Amazing drive. I have done it before, but never in a Tesla. And oh boy, what a joy. Never had to worry about the gear to be in or the right speed or anything. With the Tesla, you just push the pedal and it goes without a sound and always have more than enough power. And the range anxiety completely disappears in places like that. I only lost about 10% going up the mountain. Then we had like 36% left standing on the top of the mountain. Then we started driving down the mountain, charging up the battery again. And then we went over another mountain pass and down on the other side again, all the way down to the Gata Lake. And after 160 kilometers of driving, we still had 36% of battery left. A Tesla in the mountain is just in its right element. What a joy. Would never want to be here in any other car. Just awesome. And as I talked about in last week, New Sherb Herbert Dies has left Volkswagen. But apparently it was not his decision. He was kicked out because of the software disaster with Carrot. I really think this is a bad thing for Volkswagen because Herbert was the one pushing the hardest for EVs and wanting to do it fast. I am afraid Volkswagen will slow things down because the board has been fighting against Herbert. So I don't think they understand the urgency of the matter and all the trouble they have with their software and EV sales in China and the US. They have such a long way to go. And most of the new things, the new EVs, they have all been delayed because of the software problem. So they should come out in 2026, but probably later. They are simply incapable of moving as fast as is required to survive this switch with a chance of staying at the same size as today or even surviving at all. Yeah, Volkswagen will continue to fall as we have seen them do since 2019. Not because they are incapable of developing good technology, but because the company proved with the firing of Herbert D's that it is incapable of fundamental changes. And BMW CEO is saying they think they will be selling a lot of hydrogen cars in the future. BMW still clearly doesn't believe in the future of the EVs, just as Toyota doesn't. And this will make them waste a lot of money and time on other stuff, even though they are also investing billion dollars in EVs as well. But we see the EVs rising up faster than anyone thought possible. But BMW is still just closing their eyes. No, no, it's not happening this fast. We are not sure that EV is the right way to go. Good luck with that one, BMW. And the Wall Street Journal made a big piece on Elon Musk that slept with Sergey's wife and that was the sole reason that they got divorced. And Sergey and Elon was no longer friends. Elon was quick to call BS on that one and even posted a picture of him and Sergey at a party together just the night before that the New York Post then put up. And both Sergey and Nicole called BS on all this as well. So nothing true here whatsoever. But Wall Street Journal didn't want to take down their lies because they believe their sources. Wow. Wall Street Journal is probably some of the lowest level of journalism I can find. As Tasmanian wrote, pseudo journalism are attacking Elon with lies, but the harm is very real. Yes, exactly. It's like people have forgotten that Elon is just a human like all of us. And stupid lies like this hurts. And Ford is adding an EV purpose built for police operations for the first time in their history. The Ford F-150 Lightning Pro SSV will be available for orders for current Ford Pro customers. And Kimball Musk just bought 25,000 shares of Tesla stock. He didn't actually buy them. He was exercising some Tesla options from a stock option award plan created many years ago at a price of $74.17. 25,000 shares at $75. Yeah, 
that's going to be very nice in 10 years time i wish i had $25,000 at that price but as kimball wrote on twitter tesla is just getting started i can't wait for the next decade of awesome from my brother and his amazing team amen to that and let's end off with a bit of fun. If you haven't seen Fassar's little video about GM lying to you, as I have also talked about in this video, but he also put a little video clip together for us that was quite funny and one we have to get back to in three years time. And we have said that you know by mid-decade, we will be selling more EVs in this country than anyone else. Including Tesla. Including Tesla. Okay, 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 okay. Man, dude. I would think twice. <laughs> yeah, me too, Facade. Me too. Yes, Mary, embarrassing? This is not going to age well. But don't worry, we will all be here in three years' time holding you accountable. And that is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it even though it's slightly different at the moment while I'm on holiday. But if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help the video out a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. And also as simple as hitting the super like button. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>